Lil' Kim went to jail for not snitching. Give you that one more again. Not snitching. For doing what your mama told you to do. Then your mama ever say, stop tattletaling all the motherfucking time. Look, don't nobody like a tattletale. That's what the fuck she went to prison for. Meanwhile, Michael Jackson is freed in a motherfucker smelling like little boy's booty holes. And I fuck to be excited. Michael, I know I'm supposed to be happy because he used to be black. I know, I know, I remember. Fuck that. Michael forgot he was a nigga. He forgot he was a nigga. He forgot he was a nigga. That it was us supporting him. We had that big ass, greasy ass, bell pepper ass nose. That was us. <laughs> Didn't the motherfucker want to get white? We kept giving the nigga chances and shit with the Villa Lago shit. You know that ain't no real goddamn shit. What nigga you know called Villa Lago? It'd be a line as big as a motherfucker to catch Villa Lago. You mean I can get my credit rating up to 720 by catching this shit? <laughs> fuck Michael. Fuck him. Fuck him. I don't give a fuck how good you can sing and dance. I got babies, you nasty motherfucker. You can't play with little boys' booty holes and some of y'all looking at me like I can't believe you saying that. It's a setup. Fuck a setup. Don't nobody say the same shit about you for 20 goddamn years. What the fuck is you talking about? If a motherfucker call you a crackhead for 20 years, bitch, you are smoking crack. Whitney done smoked her kneecaps off and we still talking about Michael. He spent his whole life trying to be a white woman, his whole motherfucking life. Then as soon as a nigga get in trouble, now he want to be surrounded by Muslims and shit. Michael, you ain't no motherfucking Muslim. You can't even be a Muslim. You got a white woman pork face. How you gonna be a Muslim? Half your face is pork, Michael. Fuck Michael, gonna get on TV and lie to us and tell us shit don't make no fucking sense. This nigga climbing up in trees and shit. Talking about, don't you climb trees? No, motherfucker, we got bills and shit. Take your Peter Pan ass Michael, telling niggas that done paid good money for him, telling us shit that don't make no goddamn sense. Talking about he put his nigga dick in a white woman and came out with two babies that ain't mixed. Who the fuck do you think you talking to, nigga? I'm a grown motherfucking man. You put a nigga dick in a white woman and got two blonde, blue-eyed babies? Nigga, fuck you. Fuck you. One of them babies' name is Blanket. You can't name no nigga baby Blanket. You can't name a nigga baby nothing soft. Now, Blanket, Quilt, Comfort, or none of that shit. Michael doing. We been knowing how Michael was. If you don't believe me, tell me when's the last time Michael was in a relationship that you believed. Don't worry, I wait. When was the last time you was like, Michael is fucking the shit out of that bitch? Not never. That motherfucker showing up to press conferences. He got Emmanuel Lewis sitting on his motherfucking lap. And we like, oh, that's cute. Forgetting the fact that Emmanuel Lewis was 26 motherfucking years old at goddamn time. He just on the balcony picking little boys out, just... I like him. Michael can't fucking lie to me. I'm a grown motherfucking man. I love bitches. That's my shit. I love bitches. So if you go to my house, there's certain shit at my house that ain't for me. It's for bitches. I got a regular bed with regular pillows, and I got two pillows with a silk cover on it. That's not for me. That's in case bitches want to come over there and they don't feel like wrapping their goddamn hair. They ain't got to fuck up their perm fucking with a nigga. Cause I love bitches, that's my shit. If you go to my house, it's Alizé at my house. I don't drink no motherfucking Alizé, but bitches do. And when they come over there, I want them to feel comfortable. Now what the fuck would Michael need in his house if he was trying to make little boys feel comfortable? I don't know, a goddamn amusement park, some motherfucking animals, some video games, some free candy. You notice all the kids on trial was the same. They was all either sick, or slow, or used to have cancer, or couldn't speak English good. You notice there wasn't no little nigga kids on trial. You notice that, didn't you? You know why? Because it's hard to fuck a nigga child. That's why. I can take my son to Neverland Ranch right now. I bet you Michael can't fuck him. My son will be sitting in the driveway like, uh-uh, Mr. Jackson. I thought we was going to Lil Bow Wow's house. I'm finna call my daddy. I am the boy, Damon. You finna get it. You finna get it. That's what I'm waiting for, because the timing of this Michael Jackson shit is what makes me doubt it. Every time this war is going out of control, or the economy gets bad, or something is wrong with the world at large, it's always these moments in history that Michael Jackson will coincidentally jerk off a kid. This is getting a little ridiculous. Like, are you planning this shit? Do you have meetings? Michael, thank you for coming. 
As you know, Michael, the war has not been going as well as we expected. There's been a lot of hiccups, and the public is asking us a lot of questions, of course. And, well, Michael, there's no nice way to say this, and all I know how to do is be direct, so let me just be direct. We're going to need you to jerk off another child, Mike. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But it would really help out. Or maybe he did it. Who knows? Who knows? That's the thing. That's what I wanted to say. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Mike, God, and this little boy know. That's, that's about it. That's about it. The only reason that I can even talk about this shit is because everybody is speculating. They all think he did it. And I don't think he did it. I'm alone in this. I don't think he did it. I'm not going to say I don't think he did it. That's too strong. <laughs> Let me just say I am reserving judgment until all the facts come out. But so far from what I heard, I mean, the kid said he was dying of cancer, he was in Make-A-Wish Foundation, he claims he had two weeks to live, and it was his dying wish to meet Michael Jackson. Come on, man, give me a fucking break. This kid is 10 years old, he don't remember Thriller. The fuck you wanna meet Michael Jackson for, honestly? I remember Thriller, and I just like kinda wanna meet this nigga, like. I wouldn't break an appointment to meet him. I'll put it that way. I'd have to already be free. That's ridiculous. It's like if I'm dying in two weeks and go, oh, mama, oh, get me in a room with Chubby Chuckle. I wouldn't want to meet that motherfucker. Not, my lay is two weeks. Why not Usher or somebody like this? So then the kid claims he goes to Michael's house. This is where it all gets crazy. I don't. Like, you know, he does everything you'd expect at Michael's house. They uh, climbed trees and rode roller coasters and Ferris wheels. The chef made cookies, pies, and cakes. They was petting a monkey and a giraffe, sang songs, kid shit. And in the middle of all this childlike activity, for some reason, Mike pulled out some wine and some pills <laughs> and sucked this kid's dick. <laughs> Folks, it hurts me to say it. And the kid had the nerve to call that abuse. Said, Motherfucker, that is a good host. God damn, what else do you want? What else do you want? I'm lucky to get a glass of a, a grape drink at my friend's house. Let alone a roller coaster ride and my dick sucked. Mike must be confused like I brought you in my house, I fed you, I sucked your dick, and this is how you repay me, motherfucker. This was your wish, not mine. Thought you were dying in two weeks. What happened to that motherfucker? Was, I've been in court for a year and a half. You get strong every time I see you. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that, <laughs> this is fucked up. I shouldn't even say this fuck. Wouldn't it be some ironic shit if they found out through this case that the cure for cancer was Michael Jackson sucking your dick somehow? Like if Mike had powers like Green Mile and all the kids like, please, Mike, suck our dicks, mm, never again. You didn't appreciate it. Here. Can we at least study your saliva? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Please, Mike. <laughs> it just doesn't stop, though. It just doesn't stop. Now while your body is still with you. Because the rest of us will tell you this getting old shit is for the birds. That shit do not let off. Once it's on your ass, that's it. Your ass finna get old right now. It's fucked up. Fucked up. We didn't know it was gonna be like this. I used to laugh like shit at my grandfather making all that noise getting out to bed. He, uh, 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 I'm over there judging this shit. Look at this lazy ass nigga. He know ain't nothing wrong with him at 6.30 in the goddamn morning. We see, this shit is for the birds. Your mind is still young, but your body has checked the fuck out. You ever told yourself to get out of bed and yourself didn't listen? You was like, it's time to go on and get out to bed now. I'm I'm gonna go on and get out to bed now. I'm gonna lay here 10 more minutes and get my shit together. 10 more minutes. 
and your body has given the fuck up. You start getting older, you gotta change shit. I used to be able to watch TV all night long. Not no more. Now I gotta take my stupid ass to sleep. Cause these motherfucking commercials is too scary and too not specific. You scared and don't even know what the fuck you scared of. I know I'm not the only person in here who think he might, maybe, could possibly have mesothelioma. <laughs> don't none of us know what the fuck it is. They just keep scaring us with it. You might have it, you might have it. It's worth some money. Every time I cough, I think I done caught it. Now uh, uh. I'm fucked around and I drank that miso soup that one time. I think that's where it comes from. I'm not sure. It's fucked up. You start getting older, shit change. You gotta deal with it. When you young, the only way you can hurt yourself is if you in an accident. You start getting older, you can fuck yourself up. Not doing a goddamn thing. <laughs> you young, you had to hurt yourself to be in accident. You get older, you see your friend, he got a cast on all his ribs and shit. You, God damn, nigga, did you get in a car accident? No, nah, I fucked around and yawned too fast and caught. <laughs> I caught my body off guard. I wasn't stretching or nothing like that like I should. I just out of nowhere, y'all ripped all of that up right there. there. It's fucked up. First time in my life I've ever like started to physically feel my age. You can, it's tough, man. You know how I know I'm getting old? This is embarrassing, but I was in my hotel room. I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was jerking off like. And I was like really sweating it out. <laughs> and this is when I knew I was old. I, I just gave up in the middle, like nothing even happened. I was just... like, I don't like looking at my dick anymore. My dick looks distinguished. It's old, an old looking dick. It's got salt and pepper hair all around it. My dick looks like Morgan Freeman in the 90s. <laughs> Without the dots. My dick narrates, Dave pulled me out and started jerking me around and jerking me around. But not with the same vigor as when he was young. He and I both knew nothing was coming out. I see my age in my children. I came home from the road, this is not long ago. I, I've been gone for, if you can picture, I was gone for weeks and weeks. And when I came back, uh, nobody was home. Now one person in my family thought that uh, maybe I'd like to see them when I got back. Like, <laughs> they knew when I was coming back, but they just weren't, they just weren't home. And that shit was a wake up call. You know, like when my kids were little and the tour bus would pull up to the house, these motherfuckers would spill out. Dad is home, hooray! And they'd hug me and kiss me, and then as the years went on, they'd get less interested. Hey everybody, look, it's Mr. Promises, back from the road. <laughs> but empty house, that's, that's some cold shit. <laughs> and I went into my oldest son's room, I was like, hello, hello, he was gone. And I'd never done this thing before, but for some reason I just did it, I just, I just looked through his shit. Just to see who this motherfucker was becoming. And I found these notebooks and I started going through the notebooks and it was all this wonderful poetry in them. Written as his handwriting. I didn't even know this nigga wrote poems. <laughs> and then I looked through his drawers and I opened up his middle drawer and I found his rolling paper. <laughs> and I looked down at them papers like, oh, that's where that poetry's coming from. <laughs> And that shit broke my heart. I mean, I smoke weed, but I mourned my son's innocence. And I cried a little bit. And I took his papers upstairs to my room. 
roll some weed that I'd hid from the family. And I got really high. And then I got paranoid. So I put his papers back how I found them. <laughs> so he wouldn't know what I was up to. This nigga won't even know that that happened until he sees the special. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I found your papers. You gonna have to be happy and be in tune with your star player because these motherfuckers is on some bullshit. If you watch TV, all they want to talk about is the election. The election is time for a new president. I think first we need to celebrate the fact that Bush ain't gonna be president no goddamn more. First. First. This motherfucker. I don't understand. How the fuck do you get a job and fuck up everything? Everything, everything. This motherfucker has fucked up everything. Gas, water, air, everything. And he's not just stupid. Bush don't even give a fuck. He won't even try. At least if you're stupid, you should try. He don't even try. I don't even know why he go to the press conference. He don't even be talking about shit they even be talking about. They just, what do you think about the problem in Darfur? You get on that horse, you gotta ride it. him about a goddamn horse. <laughs> then he walk off like he done really said some shit. <laughs> this motherfucker don't give a shit. <laughs> Bush done led this fucking years. We've been not finding the same one motherfucker we was looking for in the first place. The same one motherfucker. Not a gang, not a group, not a country. The same one motherfucker. The tall one with the beard and the robes and the kidney problem and the dialysis machine lived in a cave doing a video right now. We still ain't found that same one motherfucker, but they know everything T.I. did at the Hip Hop Awards. They got that shit down in five minute increments, just nine o'clock, 9.05, 9.10, 9.15, 9.00. Know why that said 9.010. Some of you niggas couldn't wait. That dumbass nigga said 9010. That's not even a real time, that nigga said. That's... Bush's motherfucking ass, he don't give a shit. Every time you see our soldiers, they tired as shit from marching in the wrong goddamn direction. Every time you see them, just. Y'all going the wrong way. We know. Well, no shit. Two weeks ago on CNN, they said Pakistan is terror central. Pakistan? That's not what the fuck you motherfuckers said, Pakistan. You said Afghanistan. Then you said Iran, then Iraq. <laughs> you motherfuckers have no idea where terror is, do you? <laughs> and why the fuck is we chasing terror if terror can't even keep a home address? Maybe terror ain't doing well right now. But well, Bush don't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck. White people, y'all too nice. Just let a motherfucker fuck up the greatest country for eight years in a fucking row. White people, you just let the driver of the car be lost for miles and miles and miles, and they won't even say nothing. Just sit in the back seat and talk shit quietly to each other and shit. I don't think they even know where they're going. No, because we passed that three times, remember? I took a picture with my camera phone. You do remember. As niggas, we ain't got no patience. You can't even be the lost driver of niggas because we ain't got enough patience. Soon as your ass make two suspect lefts, your ass is no longer the goddamn driver. Niggas ain't got no patience. If one nigga in the back go, Hey, you gotta pull this motherfucker over, nigga. You can't be the driver if you don't know where the fuck you going. We got warrants back here, nigga. We can't be lost just looking around. Well, we just say it. But there's a reason for that. It matters more for that. It matters more. Black people, see, see, even when I vote right, which I don't, but, but, <laughs> but even when I like, think about like, who I would vote for, right, I don't even look at their political policies. I just look at their character. You know what I'm saying now? You gotta read, no, I'm serious. You gotta read between the lines. 
Like, you know, you look at Clinton, and black people like Clinton, because we've seen him on the campaign. That's all one thing on the campaign trail. He, he actually just picked a black baby up and kissed him. Come here, little nigger baby. Mwah! And just kiss him. I said, mm-hmm. I like that. He did not hesitate or nothing. You see George Bush Jr., he be that, oh. Like, see, I'd never vote for George Bush Jr., but I don't know George Bush Jr.'s politics. The only thing I know about George Bush Jr. is that that guy sniffed cocaine. That's right. Now, listen, we cannot have that shit in the White House. That might be fine for a mayor, but goddamn it, not in the White House. Not in the White House. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? The stakes are too high in the White House. Can't have no coke here president. Mm -mm. He'd be selling nuclear secrets for twenty, thirty dollars and shit. <laughs> He'd be in meetings embarrassing America. Come on, sign the treaty, baby. I suck your dick. Like what the? Uh, Mr. President, that is not how we do business here, sir. Stop sucking the ambassador's dick. <laughs> no, let me finish. I will sign the treaty. There will be peace in Israel, finally. But this thing I must to talk, oh, yeah, yeah. All my people, they for bujo, and 